This is going to be like a staple in triathlon, something that triathlon has never seen before. It's kind of this exciting time for a sport. You look back in time and you're like, oh, this was when this sport blossomed and grew into what it is now. I actually don't really know what to expect. A feeling that still gives me goosebumps right now. The atmosphere of, of a new beginning, of a new era. And so then to actually see it come to fruition was really, really cool. All of the athletes start to arrive. Everyone was having breakfast, lunch, and dinner together, and it was almost jovial. When you're around all of these world-class athletes, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, that's so-and-so, and that's so-and-so. It was only kind of when we all got together as a team, then it really hit me really what the Collins Cup was about. You could feel athletes legitimately getting pulled into this. And then in the cafeteria, you just see US and Europe and internationals. You don't see as much intermingling anymore. You did see things start to change and things started to really get serious. No, you saw on stage Team Europe talking smack. Oh, man. <laughs> the They're not at kilometer 89, just like a little bit before, and you'll see where the motor's actually at. People think Europe is just going to, you know, sweep every single race. I think even if I wasn't able to run for half a year, I still have a little bit of an edge on, on this guy. Team Europe wins Collins Cup. Like, it's simple. It's going to happen. That's the plan. Yeah, I mean, it just oh, it motivates you so much. Then we had the opening ceremonies. I felt like it was a shift in energy at that point. A unique competition in which teams from the US, Europe, and the internationals will do battle to see who rules the sport of triathlon. Norman Stadler set the tone. While we extend our hand in friendship to the US and Team International, make no mistake, we are here to win. In fact, our goal is not just to win the Collins Cup, but to win every single race. Suddenly, I think everyone took stock. The gauntlet's been laid down here. Team International is united to beat the United States and Europe. This will not be the first time the US is facing overwhelming odds. I felt emotional, like I wanted to cry. I was just so grateful to be part of this. You may be thinking that you're going to win every race out there, but sitting behind our 12 athletes who are going to make that completely impossible because these athletes are willing to sweat blood and tears and show their grizzly sharp teeth out there on that race course. Race day was just the icing on the cake. It was just, oh, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Welcome to the Collins Cup. We hope we'll be faster and more furious than ever before and with a dash of the spectacular. Right now, it's all about being as methodical and calm as possible. This is uh, promising to be an interesting one. A lot of people think Daniela Riff is unbeatable. Daniela is arguably the greatest athlete of all time. Then you've got Taylor Nib, the youngest athlete in the entire event. Athletes, you're in the hands of the starter. Can Taylor Nib keep up? It's arguably one of the greatest we've ever seen. You're putting this just out of college kid into the lion's den against the all-time greatest athlete in the world. She is doing everything she can to become the greatest. When I heard that Taylor Nib was just crushing her match, I think that pumped up Team US. Your mind said, there's no way she can do this. And she shocked a lot of people. USA claimed six. You know it's not Daniela Reef crossing the line, but everything in your mindset says Daniela should be the one crossing in first. And Daniela Reef, sorry, uh, Taylor Nip comes in across. Suddenly you could kind of feel this nervous tension on the European team. Oh, and this is a blow for the European. The international team and the US team, particularly, with crushing the field. This is not going away. The experts were planning at the start. This is not going to be win, everyone. This might not even be a victory for the Europeans. There was some pressure on because Team USA was having a, a blinder. Me. <laughs> From an outside perspective, that was the breaking point. 
And here we go! This American team might take the entire thing. The United States just in a slight lead right now. It was very neck and neck with Team US and Team Europe. But it's still close. Only four points, I think, in total. Yeah. 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 Emma Pallant Brown continues to lead. These are athletes who don't fold easy. Europe has now moved into second place. All right, it's on. The international team has now moved into third. You could see that they weren't going to give this thing away. Someone was going to have to win it away. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a race. The blue tide is starting 345. to 3.45, pull back as much time as you can. Our guys tried to hold it together. Really got to dig in now and bring it home for Team Europe because it's not just for you, it's for your teammates, it's for your country. The Europeans, for the first time, have gone in front. Europe have really suddenly just had that bit of a surge. It's all starting to fall apart. This is quite a surprising turn of events, actually. Here we come, Team Europe starting to take control. This finish Very will mean cool. that Team Europe has won the inaugural Collins Cup. It is Team Europe who claim the inaugural Collins Cup, and quite rightly, the celebrations can well and truly begin. And the final word is congratulations to Team Europe. We saw, uh, we saw last time at Collins Cup that uh, Team Europe were challenged a bit. I can, I can say that some of the athletes did not really live up to the expectations. Sometimes you can win a race or you can win an event like the Collins Cup and you can still not really be satisfied about how things were. We had a chat afterwards and we made it pretty clear how we want to race. We want to show our dominance. We know we have to change something. We know we have to bring in new blood. We have to bring in the monster. Yeah, well, he's a, he's a freak. Yeah, freak in nature. He's much like a machine. If you get the chance, he will rip your legs off. He's one of those athletes that you really don't know a lot about. Although he's young, he's created one of those mythical kind of personalities. He is flying. He knows that he can get the job done, and he's fearless. Sometimes you can get really caught up in feeling a lot of pressure and feeling that you have to deliver. Sometimes it can feel a bit like you are on your own. Magnus Dittler! Because it's my first Collins Cup, naturally when you are a young guy like me going to such a big event for the first time, definitely very overwhelming, I think. Of course, you don't want to, to let Team Europe down. I feel I belong here, but you still have a, a, a desire to want to prove yourself. It was really after Roth that it shook me how crazy it was. People were asking me how I was feeling. And I told them, it, of course, I told them it, it was, was just fantastic. And I went to the run, it was maybe even <laughs> more spectator. So that straight was after incredible. the event, I think I didn't, I wasn't able to comprehend it all. But I really don't understand it 100% until afterwards. Winning at Roth at one of the biggest races in the world is one of those races where you put your stamp on the sport. 
Sport is a little bit cruel, and there is a, a passing of the guard at certain point. Magnus having that fantastic win at Roth. Jan Ferdino towards the end of his career, not finishing up the day. I really feel for Jan right now. He knows that he doesn't have that much longer in the sport. Losing uh, Jan Ferdino is a difficult thing for any team, and the European team certainly looked to him for guidance, for mentorship, for his experience. And Magnus is going to come in realizing the size of the shoes that Jan Ferdino has had. Now this guy's name is out there as one of the men to beat. After my race in Roth, I've been quite stressed. I can really feel that there's a lot more attention around me. If you just all the time think about uh, the pressure, then it can be very demanding on the body. Magnus reminds me a little bit of the old Rocky Balboa. Get away from everything, just go into that training camp 24 hours a day, sleep, eat, repeat. One of the things about being on that European team is you know that every one of those athletes have incredible resumes. These are the giants of the sport. Some of the legends who've got the job done on the biggest days, now he has to be a part of that team. Team Europe is a really competitive team and it can seem like a huge task. One of the youngest athletes in the field. We don't know what to expect, but we have seen some big things from him in the last 12 months. Actually, I don't really, at the moment, think I'm, I'm so special, but perhaps you can say that's really actually what's making me special. I am quite humble of, from my personality, but I also have a quite strong inner self-belief in me. Look out for the lethal swim-bike combination of Magnus Didlow. I try to be more the quiet killer, or what you can say. <laughs> no matter what you get, you know you're going against one of the best guys in the world. When I'm towing the line, I know that I have the abilities to go head-to-head -to -head against everyone. It doesn't really matter too much to me who I'm up against. One of the things about all these elite athletes is that as they start to rise, they really have a lot of expectations around them. Magnus's incredible performances in the last 24 months really have put him on the radar screen. And he's one of those athletes, I think, that would love to just stay underneath the radar screen. But when you show up at Collins Cup, you are not under the radar. <laughs>